Leadership is to take action in a way that adds value to someone else. If you buy in to the idea that leadership not only can be learned, it must be learned, and it's something that you need to work at for the rest of your life, like getting in shape, for example, uh, or losing weight, then it makes sense that there are exercises you would do to help improve your leadership. One of those exercises I would call vision, priorities, and alignment. I wrote a book about this called What to Ask the Person in the Mirror. So let me start with what is a vision. Vision is not some, uh, you know, Moses, top of the mountain and the Ten Commandments. What I mean by vision is as a leader, whether it's for-profit, not-for-profit, as a leader of your family, in any endeavor, I think you've got to think about what you do that's distinctive. How do you add value that's distinctive? If leadership is about figuring out what you believe and acting in a way that adds value, you want to start with, as an exercise, how does your organization or your initiative or your efforts add value that's distinctive? When I talk to leaders, for-profit, not-for-profit, certainly the public sector, I ask, what do you do that's distinctive? They'll say, well, let me just tell you what we do. And I'll say, I know that's what you do, but what do you do that's distinctive? And what do I mean by distinctive? Distinctive means if you stop doing it, the world would lose something. Some group would not get the value added that they're currently getting. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, what we do is very distinctive. It's just people used to be willing to pay us for it, and now they're not willing to pay us for it. It's become commoditized. And I, I say to them, I hate to break this to you, but that's your customers or your constituencies telling you that while they like you doing this, it's not distinctive anymore. If people aren't willing to compensate you for it as a business, it tells you that maybe you need to rejigger your, uh, your offering to add more value that's more compelling. For a lot of people, it means go, going back out and interviewing your, your customers, other constituencies, probably interviewing your employees, and figure out what you really do that's distinctive. And sometimes it takes a lot of work and thought, and sometimes organizations are very resistant to talking about and acknowledging that a lot of things they do used to be distinctive, but are no longer distinctive. But that's the first question as a leader you need to ask. What do you do that's distinctive? It's critical that you cascade that down to different departments. So what the legal department does that's distinctive is different than the marketing department. An overall uh, vision for the organization, but it has to cascade down. Once people have a sense of what you're trying to do that's distinctive, then your next challenge is to figure out what your priorities are. And what I mean by priorities, tasks that you need to do in an outstanding way in order to add that value that's distinctive. So there's a lots of tasks we do every day. I tie my shoes. It's just not a priority. It's something I do that has to be done sufficiently well, but not necessarily at an optimal level. You might have a to-do list of 20 items, but my experience is you can't pick more than two or three or four priorities. Those are tasks that you must do at an extraordinarily high level of quality my rule of thumb is you should spend two-thirds of your time on your top two or three or four priorities. So what's an example? Maybe you need to improve the quality of people you're hiring. Maybe you need to improve your coaching. You need to improve your ability to retain outstanding talent. And you need to improve your ability to manage out underperformers. That's your whole attract, develop, and retain, I call it. Your whole people ecosystem needs to be improved. Many businesses and organizations I deal with are trying to add value that's distinctive, but their processes are holding them back. Many organizations I deal with, if you ask them what their priorities are, they're going to throw out eight or nine or ten things. And that 
explains to me why, they're, why their people are so confused as to how they should be spending their time and what they should be focusing on. I always say to people, you need to agonize over what are the three or four or two key tasks that add value that's distinctive. And people in the organization need to be clear on what the top three or four priorities are and why that is how they spend their time. People always say to me, do you have any advice on time allocation techniques? Simple, figure out your top two or three or four priorities and allocate 60 or 65% of your time. Overweight your time to those priorities. If you have an extra hour in the day, overweight. Again, people is almost always one of them. Upgrading your technology is probably also another one. Um, depending at, at, on your organization, uh, maybe it's your sales force, client relationships would be a third. And by the way, those priorities change from year to year. But again, vision, what do we do that's distinctive? What are your two or three or four top priorities? If you do nothing else as a leader, but figure out with your team your vision and your top priorities and have your organization understand those well, you will become a dramatically better leader. The next thing as a leader that you focus on is what I call alignment. And the truth is most of us as leaders spend the bulk of our time on alignment. We're trying to add that value, we're working on these priorities, but in order to achieve those priorities, we've got an alignment issue. What's an alignment issue? Maybe you don't have the right people in the right seats, you may not have the right organization incentives, maybe you have too many direct reports. Maybe certain divisions should be combined. Maybe you're sprawled out where people aren't communicating enough with one another. Those are all alignment issues. Another reason why your organization may be out of alignment is you. Your leadership style. Do you share information? Do you coach? Do you ask for feedback? Do you uh, work on making sure that promotions are consistent with the things you're trying to accomplish? When things go wrong, what do you do? Do you stay calm and try to encourage people? Or do you point the finger where people are afraid to make a mistake and they're afraid to speak up. All those are leadership style issues. I'm gonna talk more later about leadership style, but the point is a big part of a leader's time is once you've figured out the vision and you're comfortable with the priorities is to take all the steps and figure out where you're out of alignment. In terms of making changes, trying to get in alignment. People talk a lot about change management. They want strategies for change management. I'm not as, I'm not as interested in going down that road, although it's important. The trick is, why do you make change? You make changes when you're out of alignment, okay? And if you can explain to your organization or get their feedback as to what needs to be done on people, tasks, organizational incentives, organizational structure, your leadership style, if you can do it in the context of how do we add this value and accomplish these priorities, I think you'll get plenty of advice and buy-in on making these alignment decisions and the change management you need to do in order to get in alignment. Now I should tell you, alignment is a never-ending, why? Because the world is constantly changing. This is an ongoing process, you're never done, and you can't do it alone. You have to do it with your people, and ideally with your key constituencies, including your customers.